Hi, this is just the second video of probability distributions. In statistics books, you will often see references to two different types of statistical techniques, parametric and no-parametric. What is the difference between these two sets of techniques? The word parametric comes from the parameter or characteristics of a population. The parametric tests make assumptions about, about the population from which the sample has been drawn. This often includes assumptions about the shape of the population distribution, for example, normally distributed. Non-parametric uh, techniques, on the other hand, do not have such stringent requirements and do not make any assumptions about the, uh, about the underlying population distribution. This is why they are sometimes referred to as distribution-free tests. At this point, you don't need to memorize these techniques. Of course, these techniques you don't need to memorize it. Um, my intention is to show you that there are statistics belong to parametric ones and there are non-parametric alternatives or non-parametric counterparts of each parametric statistic. When your variable is nominal or ordinal or hierarchical, they are definitely non-parametric data. Regarding the, in the interval data, it is different. It has a different uh, perspectives. For example, when you have measured something using this kind of a Likert scale, then the data will be interval data. Regarding this data, the statisticians who are uh, restricted to the accuracy of the data will deny that the interval data are parametric. They would say they, the data are no clear numerical interpretation. But the social scientists would accept the interval data as a parametric. They would say psychological distance in interval scale is almost equivalent to the numerical quantity. As a design researcher, I would go for or I would advocate the social scientist's thinking. However, when your paper is reviewed by more um, stringent scientists, they can insist that your interval data are non-parametric. Also, design study, we even accept uh, even accept ordinal data as parametric. Therefore, depending on uh, which discipline you are in or your target publication belongs to, the distinction of a parametric or non-parametric can uh, differ or different. Once you consider your data are non-parametric and thus you choose a non-parametric statistical alternative for your analysis, you can enjoy the following benefits. First, uh, it is very useful when you have a relatively smaller size sample, typically less than 20. Second, you do, uh, it's not necessary to assume the shape of a population as a normal distribution. So when the data shape is uh, something like this uh, or something like this, so they look quite, quite different from the normal distribution, right? So in such a case, um, you can take the non-parametric alternatives. And third, it is ideal when you have data that are measured on nominal or ordinal scales, uh, which means when your data have no clear numerical interpretation. However, it is not always the happy story. There are also disadvantages. The non-parametric st uh, statistics are first 
less sensitive than their more powerful parametric alternatives, and they may fail to detect differences between groups that actually exist. And if you have the right sort of data, it is always better to use parametric statistics if you can. When we learn a statistical technique, we will always cover parametric approach, uh, parametric approach as well as non-parametric approach. In design study, the non-parametric statistics are quite relevant because many of our variables are measured in interval scale or hierarchical scale or the number of participants are relatively small. For example, if you, your research data are based on the interview of the CEOs, it will be very difficult to collect answers from more than 10 CEOs. So despite of these, these weaknesses, the non-parametric statistics are relevant, particularly for design studies. In addition to the normal distribution, the other three probabil probability distributions are summarized here. Differently from the normal distribution, you see here that each distribution has more than one line. This means that the distribution varies depending on something. In case of a t, -t distribution, it is the distribution of a mean of normally distributed samples. When the size of a sample is larger than 30, the t distribution resembles the normal distribution. So uh, when this something, this is actually degree of freedom, is, is increasing, then the line is getting closer to the normal distribution. The black line is actually the normal distribution. In case of F distribution and chi-square distribution, the shapes are drastically changing depending on the deg degree of freedom. Here the degree of freedom is um, uh, mentioned using D and the, you need a two degree of freedoms for identifying the uh, F values in F distribution and you have one degree of freedom in chi-square distribution. Except the T distribution, uh, what the other two distributions are estimating is beyond the scope of this class. So let me go to the next slide. And uh, for this part, you will be acquainted um, in the end of the semester. To consult the value from the T distribution, F distribution, or chi scale distribution, we need to know the degree of freedom. As you see here, depending on the degree of freedom, the distributions are different. The degree of freedom is actually the number of values that are free to vary. For example, when you have two observations, you can say that you have one degree of freedom. Let me show you how the degree of freedom is uh, uh, working. So in T distribution, for 95% uh, of probability, the T value for degree of freedom 10 is 2.228. And let me increase here, 30. Then it's getting decreased, and then let me put it in 100. Then it is uh, closer to 1.96, if I, 1,000, then it almost, it equals to the test score of uh, standard normal distribution. So when degree of freedom is uh, increased, then uh, the T distribution resembles the standard normal distribution. Okay, scare. Let me show you. When this degree of freedom is one, like that, and two, three, four, four T. Yes, you see. So in after 
F distribution and chi-square distribution, the degree of freedom uh, drastically changing the shape of the distributions. So um, that's it for the probability distributions. I hope you are now capable of solving the before class quizzes. Thank you for your attention and see you in class.